Today I want to do a little video on how the gimbal works on the drone DJI Phantom 4. Now I wasn't really going to tell you how it works, what I want to do is actually film the aircraft in the air. In a windy day, which it is today, I've been waiting for a day that's quite stormy but not raining. And we'll see that to, over a long interval shoot that I try and do. And we'll film it from the ground how the drone is reacting to the wind just to stay in position. So if the wind's flowing at say 10 miles an hour this way, the drone will have to fly at 10 miles an hour through that wind just to stay on point because it's controlling itself by GPS and other sensors. And the camera, the gimbal, regardless of the uh, attitude of the drone, whatever angle it is, even if it's bouncing around and moving around, the gimbal is supposed to keep the video like the drone is completely static in the air. Also when it's moving around, it tries to keep it like as smooth as possible. So what I'm gonna try and do is film the drone from the ground and we'll see, see how that works because we're gonna set it at 100 meters. So I'll show you on different lenses or with different cameras uh, how far away it looks from the ground and we'll try and film it in stormy conditions and just see what it looks like. Okay, let's start this up. So we'll go and put this at about 100 meters, which you can see it's at 30 now, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, pretty much 100. And we'll set it in a kind of nice view with the park and the water and stuff. Now this, I don't know if you can even see it, is on a phone camera. So phone cameras, because of the narrow lens, and short length of the lens, they make everything look like they're further away than they actually are. As you know, if you take a picture of the moon, your eyes are roughly, I think, 40 mil, uh, respectively, to a lens. And when you look at something, you focus on that area. So it looks really close in comparison to a camera when you take a picture and then you look at the full picture and everything looks really small. Now on my Sony ASR2 here, let's get out of the way of the light dog we've got a 55 mil sony lens so this is the closest lens i have to uh to human eyes supposedly so let's put it onto that and have a look how far so this is for the 55 mil on my uh, sony uh, a7r2 and you can see it's still very difficult to see this is all kind of pointless really for what we want to do we want to see the drone we want to see what angle it is so we can overlay the real footage and see how well the gimbal's doing okay this may impress some people i'm sure of its length and girth but it's a promaster 300 mil and it's the worst piece of optical garbage i've ever bought okay this is through that 300 mil still not super close but a hell of a lot closer than the other two and we'll overlay the the interval the time lapse that i was doing you can see the actual drone jumping around a little bit, but the time lapse still looks relatively good, so it's pretty good. But I think we need to get in closer. Okay, we brought in the big boys now. This is the Slash Drone 8 inch telescope that I use for star spotting. I can attach my A7R camera, so we can actually use this to try and get some drone footage. If I can even lock onto it or find it with this kind of narrow field, never mind focus it, it's a question, but it's good. Okay, here we are, we're zoomed in on the drone from, this is 100 meters high, so it's very difficult to follow it. It is jumping around a little bit. On the actual display on the tablet, it was saying it was moving in the both horizontal and vertical direction. It was getting up to 0.5 uh, meters of speed. So it's really windy. You can see the angle on the thing, but yet the gimbal is, uh, you can see it jiggling around and moving around, trying to keep stable and trying to keep the image. But what does that look like when we overlay the intervals that was created from this at this moment? Here we go, these are the intervals, obviously they're running a lot faster than the video with the drone, so they're not exactly synchronized. The noise you can hear is from the scope, so it's rotating, 
left and right and you're up and down and little increments just so I'm trying to follow it's really difficult the see the videos are not really bad it does struggle a little bit on the vertical uh, drop and rise but really I've taken into account this is uh, probably a time you shouldn't be flying the zone or it's on the limits of the drone so you can see there in this little one there's a storm coming in so the winds are pretty high so overall it's not bad at all really I think this is worst case condition and I just really wanted to try and video it at a long distance away I think the telescope is quite a unique way of doing that I'm really surprised how good the quality is actually now well it's focused as you can see now the storm is coming in fast and I think it's time to bring the drone down before it gets its little props wet now I've got pretty good feedback on the DJI Phantom 4. I've used it, I've only had it for probably like three or four months. Uh, I've basically been to Jert, Hong Kong, uh, I've been all over the Philippines releasing it off boats, landing it in sand. I was at England, flying it all around the beach and over parks and just using it everywhere time I can around my city. It's really had a lot of use and this is the kind of how I package it up, but it's been an absolutely fantastic device. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll whatever the next video might be, I'll see you in. Bye-bye.